Hello everybody, Mr. 901 Tommy Jackson, official maestro of content for Looney Tunes World of Mayhem. And the gadgets are coming. The gadgets are coming. Now why you sound so worried? It's gonna be just fine. That's right, gadgets are coming to the World of Mayhem and we're gonna go over the blog post put out by Looney Tunes World of Mayhem on the official website today. Kind of go through it, show you what to expect, give you some ideas on uh, how these are gonna be used. And uh, even at the end of the blog post, there's some notes from actual play testers that we're gonna talk about too. We've been going over this live on Twitch today and at 1 p.m. Central every weekday, you can join me live at twitch.tv forward slash Mr. 901 Tommy Jacks. All right, but we've got nothing else to do but jump into these gears. Let's jump in to this blog post of mayhem. All right, so here we go. Now, okay, I like the picture. The picture's cool. Okay, I know that's not what you're here for. All right, new features, Acme Gadgets. All right, let's take a look here. What up, Doc? Two months ago, we informed you about the upcoming features we were working on. One of them is gadgets, collectible items you could equip to any tune to unlock new utility in combat. Gadgets will allow you to personalize your teams to play with your own strategy. Furthermore, customize your team. Means no two meta teams will play the same. All right, so that's very interesting. Are you ready to explore infinite possibilities pairing the right gadgets with the best tunes? Let us give you more detail about the new upcoming feature going live on June 24th and available for players level 16 and up. That's really cool. We've got a date. This is a very detailed, robust uh, blog post compared to usual blog posts, like for regional events and things like that. Uh, so we're going to go through this. And, and I'm going to tell you my first impressions, and uh, this is a good thing. For anybody out there that's playing uh, Marvel Strike Force right now, I feel like, and this is just my own opinion here, that this is a take on ice 08 okay and um as we get through this blog post for anybody that's playing msf we'll see now of course they're they're kind of sister games right um msf and looney tunes i think you'll see that there is uh, a direct kind of correlation between how they work at least all right so how do they work that's a good question all right so gadgets are wild acme corporation contraptions that can be equipped on your tunes you can equip a tune with up to four gadgets at a time. And we've even got a little animated GIF here where you can kind of see right here how they're equipping. Uh, this is the gear equip screen, and we'll be looking at more of that here in just a moment. And you can see them, how they're equipping. And then you can see the stats. So there's 2.5% health, 12.5% health, 15% health. And you can see how that works there. The more gadgets you pair your tune with, the more bonuses it gets. However, there are some basic rules to keep in mind. Each gadget you equip on your tune grants it bonuses. Equipping multiple gadgets of the same set unlocks bonuses. Equip two for an additional stat bonus and four to unlock a new ability. Purple gadgets are rare. They have the same sets and abilities as common gadgets, but max out at higher levels, thus granting additional bonuses. A tune equipped with level one gadget will immediately take advantage of its newly acquired bonuses and unlocked abilities. However, we encourage you to level up your gadgets using gold and scraps to increase them further. If you're looking for extra scraps, you can recycle unused gadgets to get some in exchange. The higher the level of the gadget, the more scraps you will get. Finally, you can unequip gadgets from your tunes. You can unequip at level one gadget for a very low price, but said price will increase based on gadgets level. Now price, by price they're talking about by gold, um, in-game gold. All right, um, so essentially there you can sw match and match, swip, swap, however you want to, um, but there is a gold price on um, on unequipping and switching it. All right, so how do gadgets appear on the game interface? Now, a lot of you guys, if you updated your game yesterday, you noticed that there was a, a panel right here uh, in the top right of this picture 
that says gadgets coming soon. Well, this is what it's gonna look like once you have gadgets equipped. Uh, you notice that they did redo the skills portion uh, so that they had room for the gadgets. Uh, and these gadgets we'll see here in a moment actually show up in a battle um, in the same place that your passive skills were. So you will be able to see that. All right. Your tune profiles are updated with a gadget section. You'll be able to glance at your equipped gadgets and available slots, as well as activated bonuses and abilities. And right here, you can kind of see that happening. If you, if you look, as they go in, they're going to edit the gadgets. And you can see right here, Equip 2, there's the bonus, 10% health. Equip 4, this tune has 25% lifesteal. So it's showing you, here's the top part, the 15% health, the 5% attack, and then the actual uh, secondary bonuses at the bottom. Tap add, Edit Gadgets to navigate your gadget inventory. Now let's discover and equip the most appropriate gadgets for this tune. All right, so what they're saying here is how you can sort and and adjust gadgets for a tune. You can filter by gadget set. For an example, show me health vacuum gadgets. Sort your available gadgets by stat bonus or rarity. Example, show me gadgets that increase crit damage the most. Equip and unquip available gadgets. Move gadgets from another tune to this one. Need more gadgets for a specific set? Tap find to get some. So that's something that, like, for example, as we scroll back up here, you'll notice that, uh, like, let's say, for example, the one, see, it says find now. You could actually click on that, and just like the find menu in the game, you're going to be able to um, farm that. And you're probably wondering, well, where? We'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, gadgets in battle. So here's a, a example of what they look like in battle. If you look down here at the bottom, they're set up just like... Uh, passive skills. So tap and hold a tune, enemy or your own, to see its equipped gadgets and activated abilities. During battle, your gadget activated abilities appear as passive skills, just like all your other abilities. You can tap and hold any tune to see their equipped gadgets. This works for both your own and enemy tunes, allowing you to scout and adjust tactics during battle. So that's that's an example here where they're pressing and holding on this gadget, this ability of Taz, and it says whenever a tune defeats an enemy, it gets attack up uh, until the end of battle. If it's an attacker, it also gains 50% turn meter. Um, you will most often face tunes that sport gadgets in PvP modes like in Brawl, Arena, Alliance Wars. Enemy tunes found in PvE modes like Campaign, Events, and Tower, and R&D cannot have gadgets. So again, that's very, it just, it's very reminiscent to me of ISO 8. Where and how can we get gadgets? You can earn gadgets from the all new gadgets campaign. Explore the warehouses of Acme Inc., fight enemies and steal storage crates to find the best gadgets. The gadgets campaign is a permanent addition to the game and lives right next to Marvin's Invasion. So we've got our own campaign here um, where you it's specifically set up for gadgets. Uh, again, with Marvel Strike Force, there's a separate ISO 8 campaign to where you can go in if you're looking for one or uh, if you're looking for, uh, which you may even be able to get scraps during this, not sure yet, but you know, in MSF, you're able to get the ions, you're able to also farm for particular ISOs, i.e. gadgets. Uh, and I feel like it'll be similar to that. To participate, you'll need some gadget energy and no tune restrictions, meaning that you can bring any team you like. Um, that's a great thing because in something like this, that's the last thing you want is tune restrictions where you have particular ones you have to use. The further you go into the gadget campaign, the more gadgets you will earn. Beware, the sixth and final act features the toughest enemies ever faced in a PvE mode. Now guys, I. I remember a few really tough, really tough enemies. Like, you know, 7.77 uh, Lunars that were maxed out to the gills. Uh, so that's very interesting about, about that. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of excited to see what they mean by that. While enemy tunes cannot have gadgets, they will have their stats increased by boost. Even the more seasoned players will need strategically picked and leveled up gadgets in order to clear it. All right. 
Uh, what kind of bonuses can the gadgets offer? Gadgets unlock two types of bonuses, additional stats and new abilities. Let's explore the abilities first. As discussed, gadget abilities are unlocked when you equip multiple gadgets of the same set. These abilities are available from level one common gadgets, so you can try them as soon as possible. At launch, the following gadget sets and abilities will be available. Now look, as we go through this, this is a whole section of what the available gadgets are gonna be. Keep in mind that the set name is here. When you equip two, this is the bonus you get. And when you equip four, this is the ability. It's uh, basically a set bonus, if you will. All right, so the first one here is health vacuum. 10% health when two. With four, this tune has 25% lifesteal. And we saw this example uh, above with uh, Vampire Ralph. Punching stick, 10% attack. When you equip four, whenever this tune defeats an enemy, it gets attack up until the end of the battle. If it's an attacker, it also gains 50% turn meter. And uh, I believe the uh, the counter to that, Iron Cur Curtain, 10% uh, defense when you have two, when you have four, whenever this tune receives damage, apply attack down to the attacker for two turns. If this tune is a defender, once per battle, when its health gets below 50%, heal it for 30% max health. Slippery Oil. Equip two 10% defense. Whenever one or more allies are healed, this tune gains dodge chance up for two turns. Anger Pills, 10% defense with two. With four, whenever this tune receives damage, it gains attack up. And Spiked Palms. With two, you've got 10% health. Whenever this tune deals damage, it gains defense up. If this tune is a support, also heal your allies for 45% of its attack stat. So Spiked Palms, I know it's a palm, but I can literally write, as I read this and look at it, I'm like, okay, cheerleader Wally, this will be great. Um, I'm looking at this right off and I'm like, okay, so um, we're gonna go ahead and put this on a, a Dodge team and good googly moogly. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of cool little things that, you know, I'm just thinking about in, in theory crafting as I was going over this blog post earlier. In addition to activated skills, Gadgets grant two categories of stats, main and substat. Each gadget has one main stat, which can increase attack, defense, or HP. The main substat is randomly determined when earning the gadget. So essentially what will happen is the substats here, you'll see right here, are down here below. And the main stats up top. So these ones on the bottom, from what I'm understanding on this, See, plus random upgrade, see? There it is. The ones on the bottom are the substat. Level up your gadgets to improve your stat bonuses and unlock new substats. It's important to highlight that gadgets will not grant speed. Indeed, it was important for our team that we didn't touch the stat as, as you know, this can be a crazy game changer in a turn-based RPG like ours. Um, I'm not the only one that said it, but I've said it for a while now. Speed is king in one of these turn-based games. So I am happy to see that they did not mess with that whatsoever. Um, now there is a new update to the stat sheet for each tune. I want you guys to take a look at this picture real quick. Here's the totals, but there's now boost and gadgets that add to your total. And down here below, this, this to me was huge. I thought this was a big deal. It's now showing piercing, critical damage, critical defense, debuff resistance, and tenacity on this same page. They're actually, um, I thought that was a big deal. And the fact that it actually shows the different the different uh, categories, it's, a, it's real clear to see and, and understand what you're looking at. The tune stat sheet has been updated to more clearly show how much your stats and power is attributed to boost and now gadgets. Devil Dog is equipped with four rare max level gadgets, increasing his power significantly, which it is. You can see it's like a 35% uh, power boost right there. All right, Dev's note. A lot of power from gadgets comes from skills they grant. They are available from level one gadgets and are the same for both common and rare gadget. It means that as soon as gadgets are released, every player will get a significant power bump. Unlike Cosmic Stars, you can form for, farm for specific gadget sets and then equip them to the tune you want. 
All right, so is there any tips on where to start and remain competitive? Uh, as a good tip, it's to focus on a specific gadget set first. Gadget sets drop from specific battles in the gadget campaign. Focus your resources on key battles to complete your desired gadget set faster. Equip a full set to activate its gadget ability, which will boost your power considerably even with level 1 gadgets. Uh, from then on, start leveling up your equipped gadgets by recycling your unused ones for scraps. Soon enough, you will have complete max level gadget sets increasing your power, which you can move to different tunes when you need an extra boost. Um, I'm all for all that. Um, none of that seemed out of the way whatsoever. Um, it's going to... I'm really interested to see with this gadget campaign. Will it be a campaign for each gadget set? Will it be just multiple campaigns? I'm really curious to see how that's going to work out. All right, so... Number six. How did we ensure to keep the game balanced and the matches fun? I think this is probably the most or one of the most concerning things that I've seen uh, when people started talking about gadgets originally. Um, all right, so for the initial collection of gadgets, we focused on creating sets that have skills that work with a broad set of tunes, but are also fun to interact with. There are two gadgets designed for each tune archetype, attacker, defender, and support. We work closely with our tune team to create a wide set of gadgets and narrow it down to the six we think we are going to be easy to understand, fun, but also can create interesting strategic decisions and upsets for the popular team. After that, we play tested extensively to fine tune for balance, a process very similar to the one we use to balance new tunes. We are excited to see how gadgets will add variance to the dominant teams we see in Arena and Alliance War and what you, our players, think about your favorite gadgets. All right, so we've gotten a lot of information in this blog post. Um, nothing, I mean, we've got a lot of specifics, but nothing super specific about the campaign or the cost or anything. We're going to find out more about that on June 24th. We do have some testers quotes here, though. And we're going to take a look at those real quick. We got to work with a few players while developing gadgets and asked them what they liked about them. Here's some of their quotes. I love the dynamic my tunes can have now with gadgets. It feels that I can make my tune be more unique and if I use the gadgets correctly to increase my tune's potential. Uh, I love to see how creative people will be and how they will choose to use gadgets. And that's, I, I really like the theory crafting aspect of this. This is what I liked when ISO 8s came to MSF. Um... Just seeing what each tune can do. Some very interesting battles are possible thanks to gadgets. Feels more like an RPG game, and I can see that. And then this one right here, they didn't have to put in, but they did. And uh, I'm glad they did. It says applying gadgets to different tunes and watching how that helps or changes their play. Hopefully, it won't be terribly prohibitive to change gadgets to other tunes like that since uh, that's part I find enjoyable. So what they're saying there is they're hoping it's not too rough to switch them from tune to tune. Um, and, and another thing that we don't know, they're talking about one set to move across to other tunes. Can we have more than one set? That's one of the questions that I have. Um, how are the campaigns going to be set up? That's another question I've got. Uh, I'm sure you guys have a lot of comments and questions about all of these gadgets coming to the game. And let me know in the comments below on what your thoughts are on these gadgets, uh, how you think it's going to affect the game. Personally, I, I know I'm always trying to be, you know, a little ray of sunshine with the positivity, uh, but I think it, whenever you can try to evolve a game that's been out this long and without changing the core of it, but just adding things along the way, uh, coming up with the interesting ways to change that without breaking it, of course, I think that's a positive thing. Um, so we'll see June 24th when gadgets drop, we'll be live on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Mr. 901 Tommy Jack. You can come along, check it out with us live. And, uh, that's what we've got for the blog post of mayhem today, guys. While you're here, do me a favor, do a run in on that old subscribe button, bang that bell while you're here and might as well throw a like on this thing while you're at it. And until next time, guys, stay loony and we're going to catch you down the road.